All righty. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to another weekly webinar. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so it will be sent out to you after, just as a reminder. Um, but without further ado, we have Mallory as our guest speaker today. She's going to be talking to us more about Pardo and how to leverage that for your REI business. So I'll pass it off to Mallory and she can take the floor. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Shauna. Nice to meet you all. Um, can we, can I just get like a understanding of like, who's in the room? Like, is this most, are these all AEs? Like what, is, what exactly is everyone on this call's role? Like, I just want to make sure as I'm talking to you and presenting to you, it's like content that is relevant and you want to learn about. So like, I'm assuming y'all are sellers, right? Uh, so personally, hey, I'm uh, Alan Hugh. I'm an operations manager for uh, Sharpstone Properties. And we, yes, uh, we do some seller, uh, you know, selling properties that way. Uh, and uh, yeah, just kind of sitting in so that our direct -to seller departments kind of has a representative and that, uh, you know, we can glean more insight. And Lamar is part of the team as well. He's a executive assistant for the, uh, the owner. Um, wonderful, wonderful. Well, obviously my name is Mallory and I am a Pardot AE here at Salesforce. So um, the reason like Shauna and I wanted to set up this webinar and bear with me, I'm still, you know, I, I sell direct to my clients, right? So I, I have a territory I cover and to be totally honest, I, the whole, the fact that left Maine you know, it's like a Salesforce reseller. That was kind of like a learning experience for me. And um, we talked through like how that looks and feels and things like that. And the reason this conversation was sparked was because um, one of my accounts called Ace Management went to Left Main and said, hey, we want to use Left Main for like our our Salesforce instance and, you know, have the setup to be, you know, um, real estate specific, right? But they also wanted Pardot. So what sparked this is left main then worked with us and because and that this is all a learning experience for me too on hey left main does the the salesforce crm instance but um we can't sell pardot right so what became of that was okay it seems like you know y'all obviously have a great customer base of people using um the the salesforce instance that you sell to them but maybe they're not using marketing automation and how can we all partner together and how can you work with your customers to talk about marketing automation and how can we do more deals together, right? So some more sales cloud, some more Pardot, win-win for everyone. So um, I'm super happy to be here and yeah. Um, before I share my screen and get started, I just want to understand also like what is everybody's familiarity with Pardot and just like marketing automation in general? And it's okay. To be honest, it's, not okay. much. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's totally fair. Reason I asked that is I obviously, so I'm, I came from HubSpot. So I've been in like the CRM marketing automation space for some time now. And this is now like three years in sort of like a second language to me. So if I say things through, I, I want this presentation to be very high level and not, not necessarily dumb it down, but I want it to be, you know, like kind of marketing 101 base. I want it to be understandable and digestible. So if at any point throughout you guys are like, what what is she talking about? What is a drip campaign? You're, you know, she you're talking in marketing lingo. We don't know what you're saying. Like, please cut me off and tell me so I can talk like say it in more layman's terms, right? Cause sometimes it's just like second nature to me. And I and I don't know what you don't know. Right. So keep me honest there and feel free to like cut me off and all of that good stuff. Okay, awesome. I will go ahead and attempt to share the right screen. It's so weird. I haven't uh, used Zoom in so long and it's already like, I forget how to use it. So I just wanna, and I'm on one monitor. So bear with me here while I find the right screen to share. I think it's probably this one. Can you guys see the Zoom? It, does it say Zoom right now? Okay, good. So you can see Pardot enablement here. Okay, awesome. Let's get started then. Oops. Okay, so obviously purpose of today's call, kind of what we'll run through in the hour that we have, I'll give y'all sort of a very high level part pitch, like 
if you don't know what Pardot is, here's how I explain it to customers again in like very layman's terms. Um, and just to also set like what this enablement is, this is an enablement that I ran for my core teams. So as you obviously know, Salesforce has a core rep that sells, you know, they're the quarterback, they sell everything Salesforce, they mainly sell sales cloud. And so I have run this enablement for them as a way to kind of get them up to speed on what marketing is, help them think about it on calls. If they hear things come up, know when to loop their specialist in, things like that. So, um, so that's kind of the way that this is tailored. Um, so yeah, so we'll do a part of elevator pitch. We'll talk about why sales should also always be thinking about marketing, right? Like what's in it for you as somebody who sells CRM instances. Um, talk about some like proven marketing ROI. Um, we'll go into some competition. So if you hear like, you know, people like HubSpot, Constant Contact come up when talking to customers, you know, that would be a good use case for Pardot. Um, and then I'll uh, save some time to talk about actually like pricing and how it's licensed and things like that. So that all sound good. Awesome. Okay. So let's start here. All right, so kind of elevator pitch. So what is Pardot? Well, it's a marketing and sales alignment tool, right? So Pardot is the only native B2B marketing automation tool that lives within the Salesforce platform. So what is a marketing automation tool? Well, when I tell customers this, I use the analogy of like a, a full funnel marketing solution. So if marketing is unfamiliar to you, you're probably like, Mal, what's a, what does a marketing funnel mean? So we'll break that down a little bit. So think, picture like a, an actual funnel, right? Top of the funnel is going to be how are our customers getting leads into the funnel, lead generation? How are we finding customers? What are our marketing, advertising, outbound efforts look like? What are we doing from, you know, events, social media, forms, blogs, landing pages? How are we actually building brand awareness and capturing leads into the funnel so that we can then have them as contacts in CRM, Right. So that's what we think about for top of the funnel, uh, as you can sort of see here. Then once leads are in the funnel, we think of the middle. And that's what I like to talk about in one of two ways. So one way is how are we going to prioritize those leads? So we want to make sure our customers have a really good system for understanding this is a high value lead versus not a high value lead in one. We also want to think about nurturing of leads. So a big problem customers in the marketing space have is say somebody requests a demo or they'll be poking around on the website, they'll request to talk to sales. And then if there's no automation tool in place and that lead doesn't result in closed one business, sometimes they just go cold and they slip through the cracks, right? Unless we have a tool that's constantly following up with them and helping your product stay top of mind, you might never hear from them again. So marketing automation and lead nurturing is a component of this. So as you can see, you know, re-nurtures cold and dead leads who aren't ready to buy. Um, there's some statistic that was done recently that, you know, it's something like 12% of leads that come into the funnel are actually sales ready qualified leads, whereas the remaining 88% require some kind of nurturing and touch points and follow-ups until they're actually ready to engage in a buying process. So if we don't have a tool in place to do that, what we often hear from customers is leads are slipping through the cracks. We're leaving revenue on the table, right? So that's really where we can start to talk about um, this investment paying for itself is if we're helping you save, we'll talk about this more on the ROI side, but say, you know, your customer, again, say they're in um, their real estate and maybe the, the average sales price is, I don't know, I'm making this up, right? But $30,000, if we're able to reinvigorate two of those leads, by marketing automation, that's 60K right there. That's the tool paying for itself. So this is like the way you want to start thinking about it. Uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead though. So obviously the, the nurturing and automation piece is one. And then the other component is the automated marketing to sales handoff. So you, you might be working with a lot of customers that are obviously using Salesforce as their CRM, but then maybe they're plugging in a third party marketing automation tool that there's a disconnect between what marketing can see and what sales can see. So because Pardot and Salesforce are one platform, it's a single database and it's super simple for us to pass those marketing qualified leads right off to sales without any kind of manual data upload, things like that. So really bridging that gap there. 
Um, and then we think a bottom of the funnel, and that's going to be reporting analytics. So it's super important for marketers to understand that we're, they don't want to feel like they're shooting in the dark, right? They don't want to feel like they're playing blind. They want to understand, hey, we're doing all these efforts. We're running all these campaigns. We have all these marketing assets. What's working and what's not working and what's actually attributing to close one business so we can really work smarter and not harder. So yeah, again, the four key areas, you think lead generation, you think lead prioritization, lead nurturing, and then all of that really, that's all good and well, but if we don't have strong reporting capabilities to understand what's working and justify the ROI, what, what's really the point of it all, right? So those are kind of the four key areas you wanna think about high level when we think about what value marketing can bring to the organization. Um, any thoughts, questions, concerns on this? Pretty, does, does it make sense? Is it sort of kind of straightforward in that regard? Okay, awesome. We'll keep chugging along then. So just another visual here kind of of exactly what we just talked about. So what is the Salesforce solution for marketing? So you think of top of the funnel, right? Lead generation. So we do obviously email marketing, landing pages, forms. We integrate with Google AdWords. So you think of SEO and, you know, making sure that your brand is high up on like the Google search page, things like that, you know, um, social posting, videos, events, all of that. And then once, this is kind of a good visual to show you once the lead is in the funnel, how are we going to vet them, nurture them, pass them over to sales? create opportunities and ultimately turn them into, into new customers, right? And you think about this from your customer's lens of who they're selling to. So um, yeah, and then of course, that's all wrapped up with closed loop ROI reporting. So what's in this for you, right? I'm talking to you as if you were a core rep, which in the sense, you know, your, your team is, you're, sell, you're reselling Salesforce CRM. So what's in it for you and why should you be bringing up marketing in your calls? So big key here is that Pardot drives Salesforce adoption. Marketing drives sales adoption. Why? Well, these are some things that we're often hearing from our customers, right? We're not using Salesforce very well. Our adoption is weak. Maybe we're not getting enough lead, enough marketing qualified leads. So the CRM isn't really our sales reps sign into CRM and there's there's not a lot of data or good opportunities for them to start reaching out to. Um, it's difficult to follow up with leads, we're losing revenue. So marketing is actually a tool that's gonna help alleviate a lot of these pains and actually drive Salesforce adoption. So what I work on with my uh, core counterparts at Salesforce is marketing and sales should really always be sold as a bundle. This is a message I tell my team all of the time. And I wish that we almost had like a marketing and sales skew, which obviously left main doesn't either, but that's why I'm here is to enable you and help you out of any time you're in a deal with a customer looking for sales for a CRM, how can we bundle in marketing at a competitive price? So they're just getting both out of the gate. You buy CRM, you get marketing is kind of how we should be thinking about this. Right. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the main idea there. I guess I'll ask your team and bear with me for like my, my uh, naiveness for how like left main operates and how you do business. But when your sales reps get in calls and you're selling CRM, you're checking in with customers, things like that, are these often things you're hearing? Is marketing ever coming up in your sales cycle? Like where, where do you see marketing as a gap in, in your current business? Does any of this resonate? Yeah, I would I would say um, in my business it resonates because it's always we're always trying to identify the lead source, the campaign that creates it, and on top of it, creating. I, I feel like that sheet you have right there on adoption of Salesforce is probably like the six bullet points I deal with every single day. It's just like it's there and we could do so much more from a marketing perspective to, through follow up and through initial touch points that we're we're definitely losing business by not adapting i think more efficiently in our processes mm -hmm. and i'm i'm sorry i don't have um 
your face on the screen, but who is that that just made made that comment? Sorry, it's uh, it's it's me, Thomas. Thomas. Okay, great. Yeah, that that's such a good point. Um, and when you hear these things come up on calls, like we don't know where our leads are coming from, we don't have a good way to understand like how our business is, you know, driving opportunities, and you know, our sales reps aren't really using Salesforce to the best that we believe they should because there's not enough like rich data in there, right? These are all really good things to listen to to think, hey. I, I think I can solve for this and a marketing automation tool would be a great fit, right? So yeah. um, so th thank you for that yeah. feedback and I'm glad uh, I'm glad it, it makes sense. Okay. So let me see if this works. Exit out there with me. Let's pull this up and see if I can get this guy to work. I'm going to show you guys just to help uh, paint the picture a little bit more, sort of like a live exercise I sometimes do with customers. We'll make it a little interactive here. We can still see, yes. Cool. You see how I master out? Okay. So I think this will just help really understand like why marketing is so important. And again, this is sometimes a live exercise I'll do with customers on calls. So let's just do this for fun. So, okay, let's start with an easy question. I'll ask a customer, what was your total annual revenue last year, right? Let's just make this up for like the sake of obviously what we're doing today. But let's say, okay, their revenue was a million bucks. It's okay. How many deals did you close to get to that million dollars? Okay, let's say, let's say they, that took 25 deals. And let's say their average deal size was, okay, 40K. Did you use marketing automation? Let's assume no, they didn't. So with marketing automation, this is going to show based on how many deals you're trying to close and what marketing automation can do based on your average sales price. This is showing how much more revenue we would be able to cultivate from like that lead cemetery, if you will. So cost of loss leads. So make your funnel more nurturing from the top to the bottom. How are we going to ensure that, you know, we're driving more business and this is how we're going to do it, right? We're going to get more inquiries and we're actually going to do something impactful with those inquiries by taking the MQLs and turning them in to SQLs and close one business. An MQL just means marketing qualified lead and an SQL is a sales qualified lead, right? So oftentimes we'll have, maybe you get somebody onto the site that is marketing qualified because they're looking at white papers, they're looking at material, but maybe we don't want to consider them a sales qualified lead until they reach a certain point. They take a certain very high value, high PTB action. So then we would classify them as a sales qualified lead. Now let's look at some loss leads. So if you're doing 25 deals um, without marketing cloud automation, you can see just like what you're starting off at based on an average conversion and what you would be if you bring in a tool that's going to help you make this process more efficient. So kind of just like a fun little exercise to start to think about like the actual return on investment for a company of bringing in ROI. And oftentimes in a sales process, you know, I'll do a disco, I'll do a demo, we'll go through pricing, investment summary, all of that good stuff. And more often than not, they have to go ask the board for budget and we have to do an ROI exercise similar to this so they can actually understand like why this tool is going to be so important and why it's actually going to help them make more money in the long run. Let's go back to this. Okay. Cool. Moving right along. So we don't need to spend too, too much time on uh, these next few slides, but again, you can just kind of see high level what some of the metrics are, right? So these are examples I'll use when walking through, um, walking through this with customers, just showing them what they're doing today and what the increase with bringing in a marketing automation tool would be. So you can see here we have um, we have a tool that's backed by Tableau. If you know what Tableau is, it's basically an analytics tool. Salesforce owns them. And we have um, an analytics tool that's backed by Tableau. What you're looking at right here is something called multi-touch attribution. 
probably a foreign word to you. So what is multi-touch attribution? Essentially what that means is what are all of the steps in a buyer's journey that attributes to close one business? So let's say, for example, a marketer runs a campaign and say the first thing is an email and then maybe they do a LinkedIn post and then they do a text message and then they make a phone call and then they host an event, so on and so forth. We want to be able to understand what are all of those touches in the buyer's journey and what is the weight attributed to each of those assets so that we can then more accurately understand what's working at what point in the funnel. So if you think of, again, it's multi-touch. If you think of first touch, what is the first touch that's driving leads into the funnel? You think of last touch model. What is that last step that is actually helping sales reps close business out, right? And we can actually see on this dashboard, like what's working at what part of the life cycle and why. So you could see here, you know, maybe this web marketing we did isn't really driving that much revenue, right? You can see it closed 38K, whereas this event we did resulted in, you know, $1.5 million in business. So giving you the visibility to understand what to keep doing and maybe what to focus on less. Are you ever on with customers? Um, I don't know if this is like a normal question you would ask when you're doing sales processes, but do you ever ask like, hey, Mr. Customer, you know, you made this investment with Left Main and Salesforce. Like, how are you tracking the success of what you're doing? Like, are you ever being asked by your higher ups, like what the return on investment is? Is anything like that ever coming up or, or not really? Maybe not so much. I think also too, because if you're not um, bringing like marketing personas into your deal cycles, maybe it's not coming up as much because, you know, unless you're working with people who care about this kind of thing, it's a little bit harder to, to actually grasp. So whole point of this, like why I wanted to do this enablement for your team is like, think of, ask about marketing when you're selling Salesforce, right? Ask about marketing. If there's no marketing person on the line and they don't bring it up at all, still ask about it. Still say, what are you doing from a marketing standpoint? What's important to them? Could you bring them on the line to talk to a marketing specialist, right? It, just this idea of thinking about things more wide. So we will continue along. Um, these are just some high level statistics um, on a, on a, um, like a poll we ran. So when using a marketing automate, when using Pardot with Salesforce, in average, we saw a 32% increase in lead generation, 37% increase in campaign effectiveness, which then of course results in a 34% increase in marketing ROI and 34% increase in sales revenue. So if you get anything from this presentation, it's marketing is important and we should always be trying to bring it up with our customers. And then if you find an opportunity, bring me in, Good news for you guys is it'll probably result in more need for sales cloud licenses and also Pardot as well. So it's just an opportunity to continue to help your customers. Let's um, skip through some of this stuff. But what you can see here, so this, this should look familiar to y'all, right? This is obviously like a Salesforce contact record. As you can see, this is like a lead, Mr. Ron Ablin. What Pardot will allow sales reps to see is all of the engagement and activity that Ron has had with their brand. So what's really important about this is the sales reps that are using CRM, they actually now have the data in front of them that when they pick up the phone and make a call, it's, hey, Mr. Customer, I'm giving you a call because I saw you just viewed this website page or you just submitted this form, right? It's more of that warmer introduction and um, a corny analogy I like to use is it really gives their the sales reps ability to play poker with x-ray vision glasses, right? Kind of big brothery, but Pardot can track all of these interactions and activity that a contact is having with their with the brand. Same type of thing here. This is obviously an account page. So we can see that, you know, if Ron is associated with Omega Inc., 
we also have this report visible from an account level. So a lot of your customers, if they're in the B2B space, they probably want to take an ABM strategy. ABM means account-based marketing. So how can we understand Omega Inc. as a whole, right? And actually zoom out and see how everybody, every key player at that account is interacting with your brand. So you can really go wide in account and make sure you're talking to the right person. Okay, we're making a uh, good time. We'll continue right along. So here are just some competitors I want y'all to be aware of. Um, if you're on a call with a customer and any of these come up, you'll know, okay, this is a good time to like talk to Mal about a potential rip and replace. Um, so I need to drag some things around so I can see. Um, so the marketing on these marketing automations over on the left side, these are more of, I would say like the less expensive sort of less robust marketing tools out there. Again, let me know if y'all have heard of any of these, but if you hear MailChimp, Constant Contact, Active Campaign, Campaign Monitor, these are all players in the marketing automation space. Our most direct competitors are going to be these ones on the right-hand side. So HubSpot, I would say about 80 to 90% of the deals I personally do at Salesforce are competitive with HubSpot. So whether that be a bake-off or a rip and replace, HubSpot is definitely the one we come up against most often, which is fun and bad for me, given the fact that I came from HubSpot and I feel like I can't get away from them. But um, so HubSpot, Marketo is another big one. They are they play a little bit more in the enterprise space. Um, so like large companies, Eloqua is owned by Oracle um, and Acton. Any questions here? Okay, cool. Keep going. So why do customers choose Pardot? Big thing is going to be scalability. So it's on the Salesforce platform, quick time to value. They get the marketing analytics, sales activation, and customer success, right? These are going to be the main reasons why if you're talking to a customer and they have Salesforce CRM, they shouldn't be looking at any other marketing automation tool. They should not be looking at HubSpot or Marketo or Active Campaign. They should be looking at Pardot because this is going to drive true alignment and scalability. Okay, awesome. Um, moving right along, I think this might actually be my last slide. So we'll go through this. And if we wrap early, I'm happy to give you all some time back. So how is Pardot licensed? How is it priced? What are the additions? So these are the four different additions we have. I would say in the small to medium-sized business space, the most popular are growth and plus. Um, advanced is awesome as well. It comes with a lot of additional bells and whistles. But before we get into this, I want to tell you how Pardot is licensed. So as you know, Sales Cloud CRM is licensed based on number of user or seat, right? So you'll often ask, you know, how many licenses do you need? Pardot, on the other hand, is licensed based on number of marketable contact. So you can have as many users in using the tool as you want. It doesn't matter. As long as they have a CRMC, they can have access to Pardot. How we license it again is marketable contact. So what do I mean by that? How many contacts do they have living in their database that can be marketed to? So all of these additions start at 10,000 marketable contacts. And then the way we do upsell opportunities here in like my business is we can sell them. We can either upgrade them, of course, to higher tiers, or we can sell additional contact blocks. So a conversation I have every day is, you know, hey, Mr. Customer, you're reaching your database limit. You know, you're reaching that 20K capacity. You should probably consider adding on another block of contacts to stay in compliance, right? So that's how it's licensed. Um, growth is like our entry level tier, really good just for basic email marketing. It's still the full funnel marketing tool, but it's a lot more limited in what it can do from a reporting ROI analytics standpoint, whereas one tier up is going to come with um, that tool backed by Tableau that I showed you. So it's going to have things like multi-touch attribution, a pipeline manager dashboard. Um, 
you'll just be able to get a lot more granular in the data that you can actually massage from the tool. And then advanced, one tier up. Um, I don't, I don't, in the small business space, I don't sell advanced all that much, but this essentially comes with things like a sandbox environment if they want their developers to be able to play around and test stuff before it goes live. It comes with business units. So think of a company, I'm a girl, so think of like L'Oreal or something, right? And you know, they own several different brands underneath that. They would need business units in that case to be able to market to each brand separately while living under the same parent company. Um, and it also comes with something called Einstein Analytics, which essentially is Salesforce's um, machine learning or artificial intelligence tool. So it takes that lead prioritization a step further with actually providing like real-time insights, telling you how this customer is behaving and what probably what you should try to position to them as the next best product to buy based on how they're interacting with everything else. So um, really, really smart advanced tool for customers that have the budget and, and want those capabilities. And that brings us to the end. So I will stop sharing. Um, and yeah, happy to answer any questions, hear any feedback, let me know how you guys think I can, you know, bring value to you and help help you guys do more business moving forward. Um, really just happy to be here, so. I do have a question because I am in, I'm not in the sales side. I'm, I'm actually a customer of Salesforce, um, but how does, are there like drip campaigns tied in with this? Like, does it compare to the cadence function in Salesforce at all? Or how does yeah. that work? Yeah, it's a great question. So the whole bread and butter, of, of Cardot is our drip campaign feature. That's what marketing automation is, right? So you think of like a workflow or a customer journey, all of your drip campaigns are built directly in Cardot. So we have if then branching logic. So if customer opens this email, do this. If they don't do that, right? So the whole drip campaign logic is built in um, similar to like a sales cadence, but the difference is that on the Cardot side, our drip campaigns are one to many. So it's more of like a, a, a mass approach to, to outreach, whereas a sales cadence is more of like one-to-one, -one, right? So a really good use case is if you have, do you know the tool, if you know high velocity sales, that's our like sales, sales cloud cadencing tool. So oftentimes what my customers will do is they'll use Pardot as like their marketing drip campaigns. And then once a customer is really engaged or they've done a certain action, sales will then enroll them in their own sort of mini sales cadence, right? To try to get them to bite that way. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Cool. Of course. But yeah, I hope this was helpful, Shauna. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was super helpful. I loved it. You sold me as soon as you showed me the lead page and how they interact with all the different marketing campaigns. I think that's awesome. Oh, good. Does anyone else have any questions or we can just wrap up early? I think we're good. But thank you so much for being here, Mallory. Of course, I appreciate it. This um, It's been awesome to meet you guys. And as marketing comes up, if you hear about it, if customers are talking about it, please loop me in. Um, I'm, I'm happy to help. And it's obviously a huge, working with your team is a huge opportunity for me to to drive more part of business through through y'all. So really appreciate the time and uh, we'll keep in touch. Of course. Thank you. Awesome. Well, have a great day, rest of your day, everybody. Thank Thanks you. everyone. Uh, have a good day too. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.